Hey guys, Aaron here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use TensorFlow in order to do object recognition. In case you didn't know, TensorFlow is a toolkit developed by Google, which allows you to create and train neural networks for different purposes. I've already created a pre-trained model, which is able to determine the difference between a man and a woman. In order to demonstrate this, I can open up my webcam and take a screenshot of myself. and pass it into my pre-trained model. It determines that I'm a man, which is correct. The cool thing about this model is that it can be used on different architectures. So while I'm running this on my computer right now, the .pb file that is created in the training process can also be used on other devices like Android, iOS, or even a Raspberry Pi. So let's get started. I'm going to work off of this tutorial called TensorFlow for Poets, which is something that Google created as a learning series for their Getting Started Guide to TensorFlow. It trains a neural network based on the Inception v3 network, which Google created using ImageNet, which is a large database of images. The first thing you'll need to do is install Docker. Docker is a system which allows you to run applications with a virtual container running on your machine. Code that executes on the container is independent from your local environment. Containers are also built on images that can extend other images. So it's easy to install TensorFlow because we can just base it on Google's TensorFlow image. To start, I'm going to download TensorFlow for my computer. Since I'm using a Mac, I'm going to download this Mac installation. Once you've installed Docker, it'll launch this icon in your top nav bar. It'll take a few minutes and then switch to a green circle when Docker is up and running. First, we'll need to check that Docker is installed properly. You can do this by running docker run hello world. It will download a hello world image, which will then print hello from Docker. If you get this message, you'll know that Docker is installed correctly. Next, we're going to launch a new container, which is based off of a TensorFlow based image. This image has everything you need to start running TensorFlow on your machine. To do this, I type the command docker run dash it tensorflow slash tensorflow 1.1.0 and then bash to make sure that I was in the shell for that container. It will download the image and then open up a bash terminal. I typed python to make sure that python was installed on the system and then you can exit the python command line by pressing control D and then pressing control D one more time will exit the container. I'm going to create a new directory where I can sort out the code for this project. I created one called tensorflow underscore hh and then inside of that folder I'm creating another directory called tf underscore files. This is where I'll keep my files for the docker container. I'll want to map a directory in my docker container to the directory on my local machine. To do this, I ran a slightly modified version of the docker run command I ran earlier. This will be available on the TensorFlow for Poets tutorial. In order to train this network, we're going to need images from a Google repository. In this particular example, we're training our model to recognize different flower types. So I'm going to run this command, which downloads a tar file, which contains five folders with different flower images, which correspond to the folder which they are in. And then I can see the contents of the flower photos directory by typing ls flower underscore photos. And here's the contents of a specific folder. So you can see there are a bunch of different files here, which are all photos of a daisy. We will use this data to make our model more accurate for particular flowers. The key to good recognition is many files and variation in your images. Going back to the tutorial, we'll have to download a retrain script in order to train our new model with this data. This command downloads that script from the repository. And then I'm going to start TensorBoard, which will help monitor our training session. To execute the retrain script, I can use the following command on the tutorial. It will run 500 steps. Each step will help improve the accuracy of our model. Ideally, you'll want more steps, but it will add time to your training process. For my tests, 500 worked fine for a good quality model, but you could add more steps if you wanted to further improve. 
The bottlenecks directory will create files which help save the progress of your training. If something happens, like you lose connection to your Docker container during the training process, you can always just rerun this command and it should start where you left off. The inception model will start downloading and then training begins. The script will look for images and subdirectories of your image directory folders. Each subfolder name will be used as the tag when we recognize the image input with our fully trained model. This process took about 30 minutes on my computer. Once we have trained the model, you can type ls to see the output. Here we have a retrained graph.pb file and a retrained labels.txt. We can use these models by downloading another script that Google has provided on their tutorial. To get this script, you can run this simple curl command, which will create a label image.py file in your container. You can test the model by copy pasting this following line. It runs the label image.py script on a file in the DAISY folder. The output of this should have a high confidence score for the DAISY tag. In this case, it's 98%, which means we've recognized this image as a DAISY. You can also train a model using some of your own images. I train my model by using images I scrape using this Chrome extension. After going to a website like Pixabay or Google Images and searching for a specific object, you can click the browser extension and it will automatically scrape all of the images on the page. Since we want to train an image classifier, we'll need to get rid of all of the images which aren't representative of the object we're trying to classify. In this case, I removed the blank white image and the black and white outline. There are a few others that I removed, but the rest look fine. And then you can click the Save Image button, which will save all of the images which you have scraped from the website. I have folders for men, women, pugs, and golden retrievers. For this example, I'll create a model which can recognize the difference between pugs and golden retrievers. You'll need to copy these folders into the Docker container, since the Docker container is separated from your local file system. I created two more folders in my tensorflow underscore hh folder. My tf underscore files underscore two folder will be used for my dog object recognition model. I'll need to run the same docker command which starts the container. Typically you add bash to the end to start a bash shell. In this case I'll remove the bash command because I just want to start the docker container in the background. I'll add underscore two to all of my tf files directories and then execute the command. I've placed all of the object recognition folders on my desktop, and now I'm going to open up a new tab and type docker ps to see the running container. To copy the files, I can use the command docker cp, the name of the folder that I want to copy, and then for the second argument, copy the docker container id, add a colon, and then the location of the folder that you want to copy. I'll need to do this for both folders. Once I've done that, I can stop the Docker container by pressing Control D. Then I can run again with the bash argument at the end of the command. I then copied both folders into a dog folders directory and removed the old image directories. Using the same process that I described earlier, you can train the model with the retrain script, but specify a different directory for the dog photos. Once training is finished, I can run my label data script on an image in one of the dog photos directories. And there you go. My model was able to recognize the object in the photo as a golden retriever. We're going to use this for a few projects in the future, but let us know if you create any cool object recognition models. Till then, see you next time.